Hi there, my name is Nils with Learn to DIY, and in today's video we're going to be comparing five different blast gates and valves that are used to control your dust collection system to see which ones are most efficient when they're new, as well as which ones are most efficient after they've had some use. So we're going to be running two sets of tests today. First, we're going to run through all of the tests while these gates and valves are brand new, no debris, anything like that. Then as soon as we're done with that, we'll run a second test after getting them as dirty as we can, packing in any nooks or crannies in there that we can with sawdust and debris, and see how they perform after that. So to compare these today, we're going to be using a 4-inch dust collection system, a fairly standard setup. We've got a, an anemometer here which measures the wind and we'll be able to show you exactly how much wind is passing through each of these as we go. So let's jump in. We're going to start with our traditional blast gates and see how well they do. All right, the first blast gate we're going to try today is just the standard plastic El Cheapo blast gate here. These usually run about anywhere from four to ten dollars depending on where you get them. And I've got this set up. I'm going to pop this in with the gate completely open. It won't go any further than this. And let's see what our measurements are. Okay, we're reading about 4,900, 5,000. Okay, so we'll call it 5,060 on this guy when it's wide open. Now if we close it, I'm still reading zeros on here. So it's doing a pretty good job when it's brand new and perfectly clean. The biggest issue, as you're probably familiar with, is that it does get clogged pretty easily and then it doesn't read a zero on here. But when they're new, these things do a really nice job. All right, next up we have an aluminum blast gate and this one has a little locking knob on the back to keep it open or closed. One thing about these is they are completely open. There is no bit of them that's blocked, which is really convenient. So we've got it wide open and locked in place. Let's give it a go. Our sponsor for today's video is Teslong. They are the maker of this feature-packed dual camera endoscope, with which you can check out the inside of your dust collection system to check for clogs, as well as a billion other uses. This industrial endoscope can be used to check out vacuum systems, automotive systems, any sort of plumbing applications since it's IP67 waterproof rated. You can use it to check under your fridge, inside your walls, and even use it to inspect guns and firearms. You can also use it to check out your household systems like your vents, gutters, and even your vacuum cleaner. All of the images and videos are stored in HD on a micro SD card and are viewable on the four and a half inch IPS display. It comes with a built-in flashlight, both front and side cameras, multiple brightness levels, and so much more. To check out your Teslong endoscope, check the links in the description below. About 4,450. So it's probably got a little bit of a, a narrower gateway to get the wind through. Now let's close it up. Oh, interesting. When I loosened up the screw, I bet if I stop it now, oh, it's still leaking a little, but it sucked up more. Let's call it 150 um, at the very least while it's closed. So not very efficient compared to the first one. Okay, next up is a 3D printed blast gate. This is really a traditional blast gate. Closes all the way like that. It's got the little stopper that prevents it from opening all the way. Okay, we'll call that 4600 right there. Now if we close it up, so we've got 4600 when it's open and zero when it's closed. Next up, we have a 3D printed butterfly valve. And this one's pretty cool. The concept is pretty simple. You've got a flap here, a valve in the middle, that when it's open, it just sits in the middle and is mostly out of the way. When it's closed, it should seal against both this side and the back, and the suction should kind of suck it closed, basically. Let's see how well it does. So we'll call that 4580 there, or 4600. And then when we close it, so about 708 while it's closed. So definitely not the most efficient one. Now the last one we're gonna check out today is a ball valve. This is a 3D printed ball valve. It's kind of a monster. There is a lower profile version of it that looks like a pokey ball if you do it in these colors apparently. And we're gonna try this out. Basically there's a ball in the middle and it's got a cylinder drilled right through it. So you can close it up or open it up like this. 46, 46. Now let's close it up. It seals it off completely, which is pretty nice. 4600 and zero for the ball valve. 
All right, so here's all the results so far for our first round of testing. I was a little surprised to see that our winner so far is the $6 ABS blast gate. It's done really well. That one, like our second and third winners so far, have a perfect seal when they're closed. We've got 1766 cubic feet per minute of air coming through that. So it's got the widest open valve basically to allow the most air flow through. So now let's move on to what is arguably the most important of the two rounds. How do they perform in everyday use after you've had them for a while? I've got a about three gallons probably worth of sawdust and wood chips and things like that here. We'll kind of run them through, pack it in a little bit, see how they do in a more realistic environment after they've been in use for a while. Okay, there's one. You can see it right away. It's having a hard time closing. Anything gets in there and it clogs. Now with this aluminum one, I'm having a hard time getting anything to stick because it's designed in such a way that nothing should stick. It clears itself out every time. I'm trying to cram it in there as best I can, but it, this does not stick very well, which is a good thing. That's definitely crammed in there and causing the same problems. Let's try getting some of this crammed in here as best I can. Okay, now that we've got these valves and blast gates all nice and dirty and packed with sawdust and wood, we're gonna run the same tests again and see what they look like after a bit of real use. Okay, first up is the store-bought blast gate. We've got this in place, let's give it a go. Okay, we're still getting over 5,000 when it's fully open. And that's as much as it's gonna close. And now we're back up in the 700s. Okay, so we're getting that 708. And if we take a look, yeah, we can see that it's definitely got quite a gap in there where that sawdust and stuff had just crammed in there and now it's just stuck open like that kind of from now on until you take everything apart and clean it. Okay, next up we have the aluminum blast gate. Wide open. Okay, we've got 44.88 and then closed. Okay, we're settling somewhere in that 59 range. We'll call it 59. Interesting, before it was at 150. Let's see what it does. And this time we're down at zero. It is not moving at all. So what that tells us is that how you close it makes all the difference. Next up, we're gonna try the 3D printed valve, our blast gate. We'll say 4606, and then closed. And that feels like it's closing all the way, like there's no more for it to go. It just stops, and we're way open here. We're at 1023. Okay, next we're gonna try the butterfly valve. Okay, we'll try it wide open. Yeah, we'll call it 4409. Now let's seal it off. Yeah, we'll go 728 on that. Okay, last up we're gonna do the ball valve. Make sure this is nice and open here. Let's try it out. 4685. And if we close it, sealed, that's it. Okay, zero, zero. So, so far that's our only one that's actually completely sealed off, which is pretty interesting. Okay, so there you see our results for the second round. Definitely, in my opinion, the more relevant of the two rounds because no blast gates or valves are gonna stay new for very long. So these are the ones you wanna look at. So basically it looks like the 3D printed ball valve was our most efficient one and the aluminum one came in a fairly close second. That 3D printed ball valve was also the only one that maintained a perfect seal even though we tried to push as much debris into it as we could. It just rejects all of that and maintained a really excellent seal the entire time. Now I've got to give props to Peter Howells. He is the gentleman who actually designed these ball valves, both this more shop friendly size as well as the full size one, the butterfly valves and others. And he's made those available for free on Thingiverse in sizes for four inch and two and a half inch. I'll put the links down in the description below where you can download those and 3D print those yourself if you're interested. 
Also, you'll find that this little $6 blast gate has one critical design flaw that prevented it from winning essentially. And I'm gonna show you how you can fix that. So I've got a video coming out right here and hopefully by the time you're seeing this, this may already be out. So I'll put that right here where you can see exactly how you can fix that with one single piece of duct tape. My name is Nils, this is Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.